Client-side rendering and server-side rendering are very popular concepts you'd hear in web development. You'd even hear them more often when talking about frameworks like React, Vue, Next.js, and so on. In this video, I'll help you understand what CSR and SSR means. I'll also show you examples using JavaScript, Node.js, React, and Next.js, and I'll also help you understand some of the pros and cons of using these techniques. First off, what is rendering? Rendering is the process of converting a piece of code to a HTML representation that the user C. In the case of React, this would be the press of converting all your components to HTML representation that will be presented on screen. Now coming to CSR and SSR. In client-side rendering, it means that that whole process of rendering would happen on the client. And in server-side rendering, it means that whole process of rendering would happen on the server and then the HTML will be sent to the client. Before I move further to show you some examples, let's look at this diagram. Now let's see your client's request for e-commerce dot com and let's say ecommerce.com has a bunch of products an example of client-side rendering would mean that this server would send a bunch of files to the client to send html files it will send javascript files even css files but the server would not render the product in the html now it would be the job of the client now to execute let me have something here the client now would execute the javascript that comes from the server and and in that JavaScript, an HTML representation of the products will be created. So in this case, the client will handle the rendering. And I'll show you an example soon to see how that whole rendering happens. Now, in the case of server-side rendering, when the client asks for e-commerce.com, the server is still going to send a bunch of files. An example of SSR here would be that the server has already rendered the HTML representation of of the product which is going to be in this html and then it will serve this html to the client so the client will not have to render that representation nope the server has already rendered that representation and sent to the client now if these diagrams don't help a lot don't worry we're going to see some good examples and i'm going to start from this simple javascript example and let's assume the product are just one two three four of course this is supposed to be images of product with name price and all that but let's just stick with this now here we have our html we have span javascript app h1 product and then we have this script and then in this script we're doing something interesting here we get the body element using document.query selector body we have this data let's say this is the product data coming from an api or coming from somewhere and then here we have body.innerhtml and then here we add this p tag and we interpolate this data by joining all the values one two three four so we are adding that to this body and that is why we now have one two three four now, this is a case of client-side rendering. The span JavaScript app comes from the server. H1 product comes from the server. This JavaScript file will be downloaded from the server, but then the client now has to execute this JavaScript, which now renders this 1, 2, 3, 4 on the web page. And we can even check that by looking at the network tab. If I refresh, see our index.html here. And a bunch of things coming from here, and this is from my live server code extension. Don't worry about it. It. But you can see what comes from the server is the span, the H1 product, and this JavaScript file. And then the browser had to execute this JavaScript file for 1, 2, 3, 4 to show. This is a case of client-side rendering. Now let's look at server-side rendering and let's look at the Node.js example. In this Node.js example, I'm using EJS, which allows you to dynamically render HTML files. Now here, app.get, which is for the root. And in this root, I render the index, which is this index ejs i pass the title prop of product page and i pass the data prop of one two three four and this is the ejs now don't worry so much if you don't understand ejs i'll be very basic with this so here i include header.js just the way you would use components in react and header.js is coming from here so i include this i have this span i have this h1 product then this data prop that is coming from here i do the same data.join in this p tag and then i include the footer.js and now when you come to the root part if you refresh this is a case of server side rendering because all of this is rendered from the server and then delivered to the client in form of html so if we come here now 
now and we check the network tab again go to localhost you can see the network tab shows that span node.js app h1 product p1234 all of this is coming from the server if you come back here to this javascript app you see that the 1234 does not come from the server the only thing coming from the server is the span the product and the javascript file which the browser now had to execute for that client-side rendering process to occur then we had 1234 but for the node.js the 1234 is coming from the server and let's also go to a react example same thing we have span react app h1 product and then we have this this is a component and this is also rendered on the client side to form this html and how can we confirm this well if you come to the network tab again if you check localhost you can see that the only thing coming from the server is this title react app and here we have no script blah 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 and then we have div with an id of root and then here we have this javascript file which is downloaded from the server and on the client the client now handles the rendering of this to this html that we have here and to also show you that this is client side rendered if i disable javascript let's say i disable javascript like this if i refresh this page you see now that we get this you need to enable javascript to run this app and this text is coming from this no script tag that we have here you need to enable javascript to run this app so when it comes to client side rendering javascript needs to be enabled because the browser is executing some javascript code to form that html representation if we also come back here to this example and i disable javascript once i refresh look at what happens we get javascript app which is coming from the server we get product which is coming from the server but now this is a javascript file that needs to be executed by the browser but because we have disabled javascript you can see that we do not see one two three four showing anywhere this is a case of client-side rendering where the client is responsible for rendering that piece of code to the html representation and this is javascript code so if javascript is not disabled client-side rendering wouldn't work now another example i want to show you is with next.js and let me open the next.js code here now this looks a lot like react right but in the case of next.js next.js does some Something differently that react doesn't do the first time your component is rendered next.js renders it from the server not from the client in the case of react react would render this on the client but in the case of next.js the first time your component is rendered is going to be from the server but then the second or third or fourth time your component is rendered maybe when your state changes or all of that it's going to be rendered on the client now to confirm that this was actually rendered on the server if we come back here again to the network tab this is the local host in this local host here you can see we have span next.js app h1 product p1234 this is coming from the server client side rendering means the client is responsible as we saw here for rendering the html representation of whatever piece of code you have same thing with the case of the react app uh, if I enable JavaScript back, the client is responsible for rendering all of this. But in the case of server side rendering, the server is responsible for rendering this and sending it to the client. Also the case for next year's. But a couple of things you need to take note of when working with CSR and SSR. In the case of CSR, let's go to our normal JavaScript here. Now let's say I have this function wait and the whole idea of this wait is to wait for a specific time. And let's say I have this async function which says client side render. Now in this function i'm going to await wait <laughs> 3000 milliseconds which is three seconds and then i'm going to move this body.html here then i can call client side render now in the case of client side rendering once i refresh you can see that javascript app loads instantly products load instantly and that is because in the html these two are coming directly from the server but now in the case of the javascript by rendering the javascript we're going to have this wait of three seconds and then we have this which means it's Going to take three seconds before the client side completes the rendering of this specific code so again if i refresh we have these two from the server three seconds later we have this now the benefit of this is if your user loads your application instead of your application to take a long time to load it will take a short time to load these two then your client will take over by loading this three seconds later now let's repeat this wait functionality in the react you can assume this to be maybe an api call where you 
get the product and then here i can call client side render and instead of doing data dot join here i'm going to say if product is not null then i'm going to have product dot join but in the case that product is null i'm going to have loading you can see in the case of client side render because of course with react everything here is client side rendered but now when we refresh you can see the client takes that 30 seconds to get the product after getting the product it runs this it updates the state everything here is now re-rendered and then we have this showing the product dot join so this is the case of client side render where your client is handling all that work to render but now let's go to server side if i go to ssr node here here i have my weight now what this means is that remember that with this the client see this loading sign here you can see it loaded fast because these two things came from the server easily and then the client handled this part but now when we go to this node.js part and now we have this weight of 3000 watch what happens when i refresh you can see this is loading and loading and it is loading for three seconds before the server sends this to the client so one thing you need to note when using csr and ssr is that in the case of ssr because your server is doing all that rendering if your server takes some time to get data from somewhere maybe another server that can affect how fast your application would load here the first time the application loads is instantly then the client handles the one two three four but over here the first time the app loads it takes some time because the server is doing all of this extra work before sending this and the same concept applies to next.js and then here i'm going to say export async function now we'll come to the next app watch what happens again when you refresh the server is doing all of this work to get this data and after getting this data remember again the first time it is rendered it will be server side rendered so that is why if you refresh it takes three seconds before the app loads so when it comes to csr and ssr you have to take note of things like this how much work would your server be doing if you want to load everything at once or you can choose to do it the client's way where your client handles that whole rendering work now what you would often find is that different applications use a combination of client side rendering and server side rendering some parts are rendered from the server sent to the client and then the client handles the rest a simple example i can show you is let's just say this blog post this is just a simple example now in the case of this blog post all of this parts of the article the title all of this can be rendered from the server sent to the client but then the comments might be rendered by the client so instead of rendering the whole article and all the comments from the server thereby making the server busy can render only the article from the server and then when it gets to the client the client can render the comments part so usually you find applications using a combination of client side rendering and server side rendering so side rendering to specify what information you want ahead of time information that should come from the server and client side rendering for information that can be rendered by the client i hope this whole video and these several examples shows you how csr works and how ssr works how they are both different and how they can work together in applications if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others and you can also follow me for more web development videos like this